Welcome to Math with Professor V. Today you have not one, but two new integrals to solve for your integral of the day. And it's my way of making up for dropping the ball yesterday and publishing an integral that I had already published a few weeks prior. I do pre-record uh, videos sometimes based on what my time is during the week. And so I'll have filming days and I lost track and accidentally double published. So I thought for those of you who wanted a fresh challenge, I'll come out with two integrals for you to solve today. So the first one is indefinite integral square root of x times one plus square root of x dx. I did a substitution first and then by parts. If you wanna pause the video, try it on your own. So since I know I'm gonna use by parts, I didn't wanna use the variable u. And I just went ahead and said, okay, let's let t equal the square root of x. And then square both sides first. It's easier to find the differential this way instead of using the radical. And then differentiating both sides. Now we have 2t dt is equal to dx. So let's go ahead and rewrite this integral now in terms of t. So that rad x becomes t. Then I have square root 1 plus t. And then dx is now 2t dt. How are we doing? Good. So now let's clean things up. This is integral 2t squared times the square root of 1 plus t dt. And then I saw this would be a nice time to do not only integration by parts, but tabular integration by parts, because the derivative of 2t squared will eventually be 0 after just a few iterations. And then this I can easily keep anti-differentiating. If you haven't seen integration by parts using the tabular method before, I have a short little video linked in the description. Check it out. But you might be able to figure it out just by following along right now. So you have one column where you keep differentiating and the other one where you keep integrating. The first column that you keep differentiating is begins with whatever you would choose u to be in normal integration by parts. It's just you want to choose it only when the derivative will eventually become zero. There's some circumstances where this column doesn't have to eventually become zero, and I show it in the video lecture on tabular, and it will still work. And then the other column, I'm going to have 1 plus t to the 1 half power. Okay, so start differentiating until you get zero. So derivative of 2t squared, that's 4t. Derivative of 4t is 4, and then derivative is zero. So that tells me now I have to match up and integrate one, two, three times. So antiderivative of one plus t to the one half is gonna be one plus t to the three halves with the two thirds in front. And then keep it going. Now it's gonna be one plus t to the five halves. I'm gonna to have to multiply by two fifths. So two fifths times two thirds, that's four fifteenths. And then one more time, we're gonna have one plus t to the seven halves 4 fifteenths times 2 sevenths is 8 over 105. Okay, beautiful. Then what you do is you draw diagonals from the column on the left to the column on the right, but dropping down one row. And we're going to multiply along these diagonals. And then the sign of the product will alternate. So the first one, you don't change the sign. The second one, you change the sign. Third one, you don't change the sign. So on and so forth. This is because you know in your normal by parts, when you're setting up, you have minus integral of VDU. So that minus sign basically gets nested in here. And then when you do another round, then the negatives cancel. So that's why every other one is positive negative like that. Okay, now let's see what we're going to be left with. 2t squared times 2 thirds. I'm going to write that as 4 thirds t squared times 1 plus t to the 3 halves. So we've got this product here first. The next one's going to be minus 16 over 15t times 1 plus t to the 5 halves. So that's this. And then lastly, we have plus 32 over 105, 1 plus t to the 7 halves, plus c. So the last one's this product. Woo! Okay, and then all we need to do is go back to the original variable, which was x. And remember, we had let t equal the square root of x. 
So from here we'll have 4 thirds square root of x squared is just x. 1 plus square root of x to the 3 halves minus 16 over 15 square root of x. 1 plus square root of x to the 5 halves plus 32 over 105 1 plus square root of x to the 7 halves plus c. And we're done. Beautiful. Did you get it? I hope so. Oh, it's not straightening up today. Get with it. Beautiful. Okay. Very good. Now, double episode, bonus episode. We have indefinite integral 1 over x times the square root of 1 minus x to the fourth dx. Okay, if you want to pause it and try it on your own, I did do a trig sub. I certainly did. And you might be saying, I don't really see how, Professor V. Well, you can still think of this 1 minus x to the fourth as 1 minus x squared squared. And so I know in that scenario, we would usually let the variable quantity equal a sine theta, a in this case being 1. Okay. Then you differentiate both sides. So derivative of x squared, that's going to give me 2x dx equals cosine theta d theta. And then here we have to do something a little clever. Because I don't have 2x dx just yet. I only have dx. Yes? So I need to replace this only as long as I have an x attached to it. So we're going to go ahead and make it happen. So I'm going to multiply by x in the top and bottom. Okay? And then if you want, we can say, all right, just x dx is 1 half cosine theta d theta. And then now things work out beautifully because here's my x dx. I'll replace it with 1 half cosine theta d theta. Okay, we're good. And then down here, look, x times x, that's x squared, which is sine theta. And then I have square root 1 minus sine squared theta. Beautiful, right? Not bad. Let's take the 1 half outside. Then we have integral cosine theta d theta over sine theta times the square root of cosine squared theta. Square root of cosine squared theta absolute value cosine theta, but don't worry, we've restricted theta, so we know it's positive. I'm just gonna cancel these out. And then now I can rewrite the integrand. It's 1 half cosecant theta d theta. And then remember for cosecant theta, we have several versions of what the antiderivative is. I'll just go with the one that's easiest to remember. You just make it negative, ln absolute value cosecant theta plus cotangent theta plus c. The other version is not negative on the outside, but you have to remember which one of these two is negative. I'll let you look that up. Okay, then to go back to the original variable x, we need to draw a triangle. So remember our substitution, we had let x squared equal sine theta. So think of that as x squared over 1 is sine theta. So let me draw a triangle where the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse would be x squared over 1. And then the missing side from the Pythagorean theorem, we can see that that's 1 minus x to the fourth. Okay, beautiful. So this is negative 1 half natural log absolute value. Cosecant theta, that's ratio of hypotenuse over opposite. So that's going to be 1 over x squared plus cotangent theta. Very good, that's gonna be adjacent over opposite. So rad one minus x to the fourth over x squared plus c. And then the only thing I would do is just put everything over the same denominator that's inside the absolute value bars. And I'd write this as negative one half ln one plus rad one minus x to the fourth over x squared plus c. If it bothers you that it's negative, you could move that minus sign to the exponent here and take the reciprocal. 
But then I don't, I don't know how I feel about having one plus rad one minus x to the fourth in the denominator. So I say let's just stop. But if you wanna keep playing with it and cleaning it up, feel free. Let me know if it gets much nicer. I'm happy with it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this double episode. Sorry for giving you a duplicate upload. Although different people commented, so maybe not everyone sees all of them, which is fine. My apologies. Like I said, I do pre-record because sometimes I know during the week since I am teaching still, uh, things get hectic. So when I have a few spare hours, I'll do like several videos and then release them throughout the week. Anyways, thank you guys so much for your support. Share in the comments how you guys solved each of these. I'm curious to hear if you had different approaches or how it went. Hopefully these were a little bit less spicy so everybody can give it a shot. And stay tuned for more content. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Math with Professor V. I'll be back sooner than later. Bye, guys.